I'm Teresa Bain, and I'm here conducting an interview for Buzzy Multimedia with the very famous uh, Shannon K. Butcher. Hi, I'm Shannon. I'm not very famous. <laughs> um, how many uh, series are you currently writing, and what are the names of them, and can you tell us a little bit about each? Sure. Um, I have two series right now. One is a paranormal romance series called The Sentinel Wars, and the other is a romantic suspense series um, called The Edge. And that one starts coming out. The first book comes out in March of 2011. Um, the Sentinel Wars is a paranormal world where there's these hot tattooed sword wielding warriors and the women who make their lives interesting. And um, the Edge series is set in Texas around a mercenary company that's run by a woman and uh, there's lots of, of intrigue and things like that going on. So that sounds exciting. How do you keep your readers guessing with what the characters will or will not do and how important do you think that is in your series? Um, I, I think there's two things going on with that. I think it's important to have characters that people fall in love with and they can predict, you know, kind of what they're going to do so that when, when you see the situation coming, it's like, oh, no, you can't do that to him because I know that means he's going to do, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, so, so that that's kind of fun, having the reader see it coming. But I do think there needs some, to be some of the unexpected, and I think you do that situationally. You know, you throw your characters into situations that they would never have conceived ever getting thrown into. And I think that's how you keep readers guessing. Oh, that's that's good. Um, what is it now? Your husband is Jim Butcher, who most people know wrote Codex Alera and the Dresden File series. Right. Um, what is it like living in a two-writer household um, when you're both on deadlines? I mean, what sort of chaos is there? Do you divide up chores? How, how does that work? Well, you know, we we work separately very well. Um, you know, I have the the main floor of the house. That's where I work, and Jim works in the basement. And I work during the day, and he works at night. And, and we, we work very hard to keep all that separate. Um, he He's a little bit more chaotic in the way he does his scheduling, and I'm more, more regimented. So, you know, it, it's just one of those things that it just naturally kind of works out. And, you know, other than having to hire a maid service to come and stuff like that, you know, things things stay pretty, pretty well in control. Our son's grown and off to college. It's just the two of us and the dog. And, you know, the dog cleans up the messes on the floor that we drop <laughs> food. So, you know, it makes it simple. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, it's not too bad. We, we really enjoy it and really the hardest part of having two authors in the house is making sure that not everything revolves around work mm -hmm. you know we have to have time where there's no talk about books or stories or characters or any of that and it's just us so that's yeah, what we have to work important. at all right. I'm sure you write on a schedule, um, and you're regimented, like you mentioned earlier. So, but what do you do when the words just won't come to you? Um, the only time the words don't come to me is is when I make made a wrong turn or a mistake. You know, I don't believe writer's block is an issue or anything like that. It's just me needing to put my head harder against the keyboard. But, you know, really, I I never let myself stop for more than just a few minutes. I'll get up, I'll go take a shower, I'll work out, I'll do a load of laundry or something like that. But then I always go right back to the keyboard. I don't ever end my day, day stuck because I think that that's just, you know, it's, it's like going to bed mad, you know, I just, I don't do that. So, and, and sometimes when I'm at that point where I'm not really sure what to do next or I know I've done something wrong and I have to go back and delete or whatever, I may still take another wrong turn and the next day I may have to do the same process, but I don't let myself say, mm, I'm not going to write today because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't do that. Vampires, werewolves, ghosts, what do you find the most interesting to write about? Um, well, I don't write about ghosts or, or wizards too much. Um, vampires are in my books, and, and I love the, the, them because they're called the Sanguinar in my, my books, and, and they're very much shades of gray, you know? They're not really good guys, and they're not really bad guys. They're they're interesting, you know? They they have their own agendas and secrets and, and things like that, and so they're, they're the most fun. They're a little shifting. They are, yeah. and they're meant to be. You know, they're, they're definitely meant to be. That's, that's great. Um, I love that you were into glass blowing as a hobby and jewelry making. How did you get started with that? Um, you know, I've always done beading and stuff like that. And um, I got into doing bead embroidery. And you buy these cabochons, which are flat on the back. And, and then um, you, you bead around them and then glue them on. And, and it's lots of fun. I, I enjoy the tedious bits of it. But um, the glass ones were hard to find. And the ones in the right colors that I was looking for, Sometimes I could never find. So I said, I'm going to finish this book, and my reward's going to be a glass kiln. So I got a glass kiln, and I made you know stuff like this. And I've had a lot of 
fun with it. it it's, it's great because I can go to the workshop for 10 minutes, if I have 10 free minutes, and you know, glue some pieces together and put in the kiln to fire later or whatever. So oh, wow. it's a great craft for someone who's busy. That's, that's exciting. Yeah. I didn't know it was that you could do that. That's yeah. great. Uh, I just assumed a kiln would be a big more missed thing. But nope. Nope. It's only about this big. Wow. Yeah. It's just a little jewelry one. Who are some of your favorite authors and, you know, or, or even authors from back when you were in school? Well, I started reading uh, fantasy and sci-fi. I mean, I didn't pick up my first romance until 1998. Um, but I loved, like, David Eddings and Robert Jordan. And um, I remember reading the, the Drew's Jordan books. And I think it was Salvatore that did those. Mm -hmm. And, and um, but, but currently, um, some of my favorite authors are J.R. Ward, Suzanne Brockman on the suspense side, um, Sherilyn Kenyon. I love Laura Lee is fantastic. So those are some of the people that I really Really enjoy reading right now. Cool. Now, if we could just recap real quick, this is one of the series that Shannon has out. This is the uh, Sentinel series, um, and if you could give us the release dates of your upcoming projects and, and the sure. names of books again. Sure. sure. Um, my next release is um, it's a, an anthology called On the Hunt, and Gina Showalter, uh, Didger Knight, and Jessica Anderson all have stories in there, um, as well as a Sentinel's novella. Mm -hmm. um, that comes out in February of 2011. March of 2011, I have the first book of my new series, which is a romantic suspense series called On uh, Living on the Edge. Mm -hmm. That comes out in March. In August, the fifth book of this series called Blood Hunt comes out. That's Logan's story. That's the first Sanguinar story. Mm -hmm. And then in November, the second book of Living in the, on the Edge, or I'm sorry, the Edge series comes out. It's called Razor's Edge. So those are the four releases I have this year, 2011. Wow. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for the interview. Yeah, it's very fun. Um, what sort of preparation do you do when you begin the outline for one of your series? What comes first, the central character development or the world building? Um, for the paranormal side of things, I always start with the world building. Um, I'll do a little bit of world building, and then once I get to a point where I've got something to go on, then I'll start working on the, the characters, because um, I think the two feet eat off each other, because in my paranormal world, obviously, I want to set it up so that there's a reason for couples to be coupled together. You know, that's part of the world building. But then why these people come together or why they're torn apart is all about the character side of things. So, you know, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, on the non-paranormal side of things, I always start with the characters. Who is the inspiration for a Miss Mabel, one of your characters in the Sentinel series? And um, what, if anything, do you have in store for her? Um, Miss Mabel is kind of a, you know, conglomeration or you know, grouping of a bunch of, you know, I love I love spunky old people. I just, I enjoy them a lot. So I wanted to have something like that in this story. And I do have some ideas for different things that I'm going to use her for. You know, right now in the world, she's, she, you know, she used to be a teacher. She was a teacher for like, you know, years and years. Yeah. And, um, but she got to the point where her health made it so she couldn't teach anymore. But with the help of the Sentinels, she's, she's, you know, the arthritis is better and she doesn't use a walker. And so now she's able to do the thing that she loves and she's doing it in a safe environment, you know, where the monsters aren't going to come and eat her face. And, uh, but she's got this antique book collection, which I think is going to end up playing into the series at some point. Interesting.